Okay, um, let's move on to the next and last uh, MOSFET amplifier configuration, which is the common drain amplifiers, or well, we call them source followers as well, similar to the way that we called common collector amplifiers emitter followers in BJT transistors. It's just because the source is actually uh, following uh, step by step following the changes at the input or the gate. That's why we call them source followers. Uh, that's a little bit of uh, nomenclature, but the important thing is, well, we want to actually analyze this kind of a configuration similar to the previous configurations, find out what is the gain, what is the input impedance and output impedance, and then uh, talk a little bit about its properties and um, basically where do we actually use this kind of a circuit and what are the applications. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Uh, basically, we call it common drain because input is connected to gate and output is uh, read from the source and drain is the only uh, terminal of this transistor that doesn't is not connected to neither input nor output okay uh, so th basically that's that's the that's why we call the common drain and then the first thing we need to do for gain calculation is to actually draw this small signal model so here as you can see i have the v in connected to the gate I have V1, or well, let's call it VGS to be consistent with our previous slides. I have GM VGS and I have R0 and RL. The fact that I have R0 in the circuit means that lambda is not zero and I do have channel length modulation, right? In the end, if I did the kick gain calculation and I wanted to know what will happen without channel length modulation, then I just have to make the R0 equal to infinity in that expression and figure out what would be the gain okay so now if i want to find the gain i would say um, i want to know what is this v out to know the v out i need to actually uh well i know that v out well let's not use red let's use blue okay I know that v out is equal to rl times il let's say that this is il but i don't know exactly what is il because, because it's not gmvgs it's part of gmvgs is actually going to this are not to ground right so it's better to actually because the current is being split at this node it's better to write kcl at node x or well you don't need to name it it's the v out so at node v out so kcl at v out i know that i have gm vgs coming in And that is equal to the current IL, which is V out divided by RL, plus the current that goes to IR naught, which is again V out divided by R naught, right? Because, well, R naught is actually from V out to ground. Or in a sense, it's not really obvious, but you can see that R naught and RL are in parallel because they're both connected to ground on one end and to V out in the, on the other end. Okay, now can I, so I found the relationship between V out and VGS, but can I relate VGS to V in? So one very, very bad mistake is to actually call V in and VGS the same thing because they look like you see a plus and minus here, a plus and minus here. So you're kind of like motivated to actually write them as equal, but then you have to notice that V in is the voltage. So let me erase these things. V in is the voltage between this node and ground. VGS is between Yes, that node, but not ground. Here. What is here? V out. Okay. So V in is not equal to VGS. Be very careful about that kind of mistake. So looking at this, uh, I can say that I, I can actually write KVL here. I can say that I'm going to start from here and go through this to ground. I can say v in plus v in minus v1 or vgs minus v out i'm gonna get zero therefore v in is actually equal to vgs plus v out or because in here i have vgs and i want to replace it i can say vgs is really equal to v in minus v out okay so therefore gm times v in minus v out 
is equal to v out over rl plus v out over r naught. Now, if I massage this expression, I have the expression that I wanted, right? I have an expression that has a bunch of known parameters, for example, rl, r naught, gm, and so on, and I have v in and v out. So I can relate them together. If I massage this expression, move things around, I'm going to get to v out over v in to be equal to gm times r naught in parallel with rl over 1 plus gm r naught in parallel with rl. Okay? So you can do the math yourself, and if you have any problems, let me know. We can do, we can chat over Zoom. Um, okay, so now looking at this expression, one thing that I expected from the beginning is that because it was, well, kind of like common collector, so I expected a gain of less than one. Over there, we had the same thing. So it's not really an amplifier. It's more of like a level shifter or a buffer. The output is not larger than input. At best, it's going to be equal to input. Well, it's never equal. You can see that I have this, this term at the numerator and this term plus one at the denominator. So if this term gm times r are not in parallel with rl, if this is very, a very, very large number, I'm going to get the gain of one. If it's actually small, I'm going to get a gain of, well, much less than one. It could be 0 0.9, 0 0.8, or like go down to 0 0.2 or 0 0.3, right? So it is not really an amplifier. We can't really call it an amplifier because it's not really amplifying it, our signal. But this is the output to input gain expression. Why do we use this? Um, well, it's the, it's used for the same exact applications that we used uh, the common collectors. We are going to use the fact that it has a very small output resistance. So if you remember with the common collectors, whenever we needed some sort of a voltage buffer, for example, when we wanted to connect to a load that is a small resistive load, for example, a speaker that had an 8 ohm resistance, we needed, an, we needed the output impedance to be very small. And then this is the only stage among the three different stages that we have among common source, common gate, and common drain. Common drain is the only stage that has a small output resistance. And that's why we use it as a buffer. For a buffer, we know we don't need to necessarily amplify the signal. We just need to actually maintain the signal. But we want to take the signal from, an, from a node that, a high, that has a high impedance to a node that has low impedance. Okay. Um, one other thing is... If lambda was zero, therefore gain would have been, well, R naught would have been infinity, so this would have been GMRL over one plus GMRL. Again, it's not going to change the fact that the gain is smaller than one, it's just that R naught is going to go out of the picture. Now, how about the input resistance and output resistance? Well, looking at this, I can say that. Uh, the input resistance is the V in is connected to the gate, so input resistance is gonna, definitely going to be infinity. R in is going to be infinity. How about R out? Well, R out is the resistance that I see from the output from here. So from here, looking down, I see R L to ground. Looking up, well, I've done this enough by now that I know that the uh, the resistance that I see into a, the source of a transistor is really 1 over GM. So R out is going to be 1 over GM in parallel with RL. Okay. Okay, let's solve an example. Let's say that this circuit is actually given to us. Um, looking at the circuit, I can first to know what kind of an amplifier we're dealing with, you have to locate your V in and V out, right? I'm going to locate my V in is at the gate of M1 and V out is at the source of M1. So I know that, first of all, M1 is my amplifier transistor and this is a common drain amplifier because uh, neither input nor output are connected to the drain of the transistor, okay? So what is the 
point of M2, it's really the active load. It's the load. It's going to be basically, uh, we have seen this in the common source examples and common gate examples. The transistors that are not really connected to any signal source because VB is the bias voltage. It's basically a DC voltage, right? We're just going to see, we've seen it before. Uh, this is basically when uh, we can actually see the transistor as just the R out of the transistor. Okay, so about the voltage gain, I know that the gain of a common drain is uh, from the previous slide. I can say that it is GM, so gain, which is equal to V out over VN. is equal to gm r naught and then because m1 is our amplifier it's going to be r naught one in parallel with our l and it's gm1 over one plus gm1 r naught one parallel with rl now in this question rl is the resistance that i see from this point uh, to like this point down right so this r down it's called r down what is it going to be well from looking into the drain of a transistor we have seen it from our previous examples of common source and common gate amplifiers i know that i'm going to see r not uh, i'm going to see r not because i don't have any anything at the source so if, if i did have anything in the source and that's the question that you solved in the quiz four if I did have anything in the source, it would have been R0 plus GM times that resistance in the source. But in this case, it's just going to be R0, and it's actually R0 2 because it, we're talking about M2. Okay, so that's going to be my load resistance. So this RL is going to be just R0 2. So that's my gain. So my gain is going to be GM1, R0 1 in parallel with R0 2 over 1 over gm1 r not 1 in parallel with r not 2 and that's it now output resistance why input resistance is not asked because it's just obvious it's infinity because input is connected to the gate right but the output resistance well it's the resistance that i see from the output so this is the r out right now I know that it's going to be basically, if I want to um, redraw it somehow here, I would say if this is V out and this is the resistance that I see, I have some resistance, I'm going to call it R up to ground, and I'm going to have another resistance, I'm going to call it R down to ground. Okay, and these two are in parallel because on one end they're both grounded and on the other end they're both connected to output node. Okay, so from here I can say that R out is equal to R up in parallel with R down. So what is R up? It's the resistance look seen uh, when we look into the source of a transistor. So it's 1 over GM, GM1. In parallel with, and R down I know that, uh, well, I've already said it before, it's going to be R, R not 2. So that's going to be my output resistance, quite easily done.